What's going on guys and gals and welcome back to the Occult Gaming Channel with me your host Bellart Wright and today we're continuing this Occult Fighter playthrough uh, of the story mode in Undernight Inbirth EXE Latest. Uh, we did complete the Audier uh, Chronicle um, number 5 and now we're doing number 7 for Yuzuriha. So these were the first two Chronicles unlocked, had a lot of fun with the Audier. Uh, chronicle um, and now we're going to continue with the Yuzu Riha Chronicle so let's go ahead and do it we'll start with chapter one continue from there ancient guardian and the devil's king already sounds interesting <sighs> this is visually interesting I don't like her face though her face is the only art I haven't liked so far. Her face looks like a brat style with uh, even with limited information. Limited information, what the hell? Well, I don't know, whatever. I'm, her face creeps me out is what I'm trying to say. Her place is pretty cool though. The um, only thing she needs is a nose, and I would not complain. We learned quite a bit about this universe uh, in the last story arc. Um, so what we understand is that nighttime brings certain dangers because nighttime can um, often become what's called the hollow night, which is a dangerous period where uh, people with special powers do battle those with uh, the control over EXS, which is a special, uh, I don't know exactly what to call it, but it's a special, um, I don't know if it's a substance or a, whatever it is, it powers magic, pretty much. So you want to avoid the Hollow Knights whenever you can. Oh, she wasn't actually talking about rain. And she explains what I just pretty much said. So the Hollow Knight doesn't often happen, but um, lately it's been happening more and more. I believe within the past year. Um, so when, when nighttime comes, it could become a hollow night, but I don't think every night is a hollow night. And during these times, uh, these beings with uh, these abilities, I don't know if they're drawn to the same area or if something else occurs. And voice are referred to as demons and monsters. Uh, there have been um, a frequency, an abnormal frequency of voids, along with an abnormal frequency of hollow nights within the past year. Something we learned in the last story arc. So she isn't involved with the, uh, it appears that she isn't involved with the, um, the leak crease, the leak crease, 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 
she's involved with the organization that Odie is involved in, it looks like. But she also has a family that's tied to Voids and Hollow Knights. So... So these things have been going on for centuries is what we learned. So old families are probably, there's probably a lot of old families over the, around the world that have developed ways to contend with this and they've passed it down through their various uh, bloodlines. And Yuzu Riha is having a little trouble here. <laughs> but what she says here does make me think that she, her clan, are the faction that the uh, the leaked uh, leak uh, crease uh, Odier's faction mentioned before when uh, Lex and Audier were talking, they talked about a faction that uh, also seeks out justice against voids, um, but they are in a state of uh, disrepair or they're in a broken down state, basically. So what she says here that the limits of her personal ventures um, that she's reached lim the limits of her personal ventures, it coincides with that group uh, that Lex mentioned earlier. So I think this clan is that group. Small and humble and they haven't done anything of note, really. So, I think their aims are similar to the uh, the leaked crease, but uh, like Lex said, they just haven't been as lucky when it comes to financing themselves and keeping their enterprise stable. she means by that I wonder if she I wonder if she does she mean that she uh, works through spiritual force or does she work through the use of force in a uh, kind of a bossy way in a way that you know you use force to make people do what you want sort of way I would think it's the latter, the way she describes it here. Well, I see what she's saying. She doesn't believe in sp the spiritual. She doesn't worship the spiritual, but she uses her abilities, which might be spiritual in nature, in order to forcefully cut down uh, rogue spirits, evil spirits. She doesn't use, say, uh, like sutures or anything like that. She just uses her raw power, which is probably fueled by spirit, would be my guess. the sacred sword so the sword is spiritual I knew something had to be spiritual the Ayami Katana Kami Jino Homare Ayami for short bam something something God I think I don't know strangely after that the incident suddenly stopped occurring 
those things really do as they please, don't they? It's not like the sword was protecting anyone from the evil spirits. Everyone just thought that the guys were protecting us, that they were chasing off the evil here. I guess it technically is none other than divine work in the end. Well, if your blade is divine, sure. Ever since or rather beginning from that point, our shrines has our shrine has become one that worship weapons or swords rather. And mindlessly so. <laughs> she looks okay there. She still needs a full nose. Um, and that's something that I recently learned about um, Japanese, uh, I think, specifically, I think it's Shinto mythology. I could be wrong. But uh, objects tend to have certain spirits associated with them. Uh, weapons especially so uh, and the more kind of experience a weapon has uh, the stronger the uh, spirit attached to it is so say uh, so I say a sword that's been used in battle for, from a legendary swordsman say it's taken a lot of lives uh, that sword will be have a um like a maybe a oni attached to it or a yokai attached to it um or or a god attached to it pretty much and the thing is like a lot of everyday objects have different i believe it's a uh, yokai attached to it attached to the different objects so my playstation it's been around for a while it's probably gonna have a spirit attached to it I think that's kind of where this comes from, her, their obsession with uh, worshiping weapons. まあ、こうやって姿とところで不思議な力なんて発動はしないわけだけどさ。まあ、泣いてても知らない。見回りに行きますか。very true. Pray for a nose, lady, a proper nose. I thought she was really cool, and then they gave me this close up, and she didn't have a nose. I was forced to as a caretaker of the shrine. Oh, okay. Still kind of a weird sentence. A bit torn because uh yeah this is like <clears throat> it's pretty monotonous and it's just like a bunch of her thoughts it's kind of cool that they give a character this much time but 
it does have to be more interesting even still. I would say they have to do something to make it more visually interesting. And this sort of stuff seems this sort of stuff seems strictly um, made for people who are already fans of a character it lets you get to know them a bit better A broom with the blade in it. That would be pretty convenient. There we go. Something a little bit more interesting. Started off on the road with the broom in hand. Our shrine was built on a small hill within a residential area. Considering how big it was, it should have been called a mountain, not a hill. This shrine actually looks exactly like the one from uh, Onimusha 4. I remember fighting there. Uh, the shrine was built on top of the hill and to get to it you needed to go up and down the stone steps in front. It was a bit of a hiking course, even used as a strolling path for the elderly, or as running courses for sports clubs. Whatever the reason, it was, a, it was great that people stopped by the shrine. Recently we've even lit up the lanterns when it got dark, and everyone loved the spiritual look of the place. That's true. Yeah, like when you consider the uh, Hollow Knight. Boys gather here more easily when it was dark. But what was even scarier were the humans of this generation. Yep. It was just to give a peace of mind. I did want everyone around here to be able to walk back home with the way lit up. Walking down the loose stone steps while admiring the lights, you notice the trees covering the area a bit less. I got a nice view while walking out onto the road. Who the hell is this? Yeah, sister. Oh, yeah. Sister Milf. Oh, yeah. Um, she also has no nose. But it looks slightly better on her. And it does usually Hiroha. She's also a guardian. How about that? She <laughs> <laughs> yeah, babies. Country bumpkin lady. I wonder what year this is. Cause I was thinking about um, starting one of my stories like in 2008, but then you have to like be cognizant of the technology of the time. So I don't know, man. <laughs> it sounds like she lives in 2008. Like the story I'm. I'm uh, thinking of. 
こうしてこうやって簡単に連絡できるの。You already legit live in the middle of nowhere. She said, like, pretty much on a mountain. ああ、ほんとだ、すごい。なんだか動きも早いんだね。この LINE ねっていうのが友達の間で流行っててね。LINE ね。使えないと思う仲間外れにされちゃうから、それで変えたの。Communication tool used throughout the world. But there's also a character with that name. How old are you? This is Japan we're talking about. Japan has good smartphones before America even had good smartphones. How old does she already have a smartphone? But the newest one is like. Super high tech. They, didn't, they made it seem like she didn't even know what a smartphone was. <laughs> I like that they say this shit out loud. Now isn't the time to be chatting about this, but you guys are comfortably doing so. With this dialogue. I. <laughs> ちょっと出かけてくるからさこれはあやめちゃんの代わりお姉ちゃんにもわかるでしょうん、うん、ああ私にはそういうのわかんなくなっちゃったし、ね、lying, 大変ねゆずちゃんゆろは I think you're lying そんな他人みたいなことあんたが言いますかお姉さま私はすでに現役を引退した身ですからね。ゆずちゃんにすべてを任せてるのよ。もう。Oh, she's letting her like make her own, um, make her own, uh, estimations on like what's happening and stuff. <laughs> If she's gonna let her succeed or fail on her own, um, two feet. Which I can appreciate. Big sister like that. Mati! あんたが現役とか語りますか就任してすぐ任期完了とか言ってやめちゃったあんたが私だって大変なんだから少しは手伝ってよ<笑>ねえ結構長い期間頑張ってたでしょ昔のことだし細かいことはもう覚えてないけど、oh, この間でしょあんたが就任して最初の夜でしょもう汚れるの嫌って戻ってきたんでしょうが<笑>ぐるぐし <laughs> That was why I worked as the guardian in her place, asking her if she couldn't just help out a little bit. See, her, her face looks okay when she's doing other faces, except for that main face. This one. This one looks horrible. それじゃあ気をつけてねお姉ちゃんはお母さんと一緒にテレビ見ながら祈ってるからあ無事に帰ってこれたらいつものおせんべい買ってきてくれないそんなの祈るって言わないでしょあんた<笑> Bring me groceries after you're done with your life or death battle 大丈夫よ思いは一つ私の心は常にゆずちゃんのそばにあるから<笑> Use money for the crack 
Hilarious. They're all so laid back to the point of laziness. <laughs> if there's any change left over, you can get yourself something special. Oh yeah, that's what all the cool people do. Instead of just telling people be safe, they they, tell, they just give people something to do. And uh, once they bring it back, you know they're safe. Hmm. Say it. Those are curse words now. Get those crackers, girl. Oh, it's dark already. She's gonna have problems. Skate melted into dust with the sun starting to go down. The shopping district was full of people just before dinner and looked uh, like there were several families out with their kids. I took in as much of the peaceful scenery as I could. Definitely reminds me of uh, uh, Roni Kenshin. This song is actually pretty good. Let me full he headphones. saw that here I was walking along with the broom interesting <laughs> Defy croquettes in their devilish aroma. Like salmon croquettes? Or different food? Maybe, maybe, uh. I think salmon croquettes. That's what my mom makes. Shopkeeper called out to me asking if I wanted one, but I had to endure. Gave a small gesture and resolutely ignored it. Understandable. What? What the hell? So you're doing I don't even know what the hell she's talking about anymore. We're still in front of this croquette shop. So the 
angel user Riyadh was able to return safely from the temptations of demons. What? <laughs> the devilish croquettes? I walked along the edges of the shopping area where there weren't many people. そろそろ注意してやるかないと。大体本当は今日もってそんなに表に出てくるものじゃないからね。私だってそんなに数多く見たことないし。small and squishy ones so those are level one level one and then the uh, mid tier are the snakes the high tier are the the ones with limbs So this is new information. Uh, knights, the, with the capital N, their knights are look to be different from the Hollow Knight. Knights seem to be uh, basically mundane knights that end up manifesting themselves into Hollow Knight-esque events. So uh, a lot of the same um, phenomena, I guess, uh, comparable to a Hollow Knight, are found in Knights with the capital N. So something new. It's not strange for there to be so many voids riding on that phenomena. So yeah, I guess uh, because something something happened within the last year, which um, manifested more of these Knights and. Along with it, more voids. <laughs> yeah, that makes no sense. What what is hollow? What does hollow mean in this situation? A night that's empty? but for a few people. もちろん夜を見回りながらそれ自体が起きないように止める方法はないかなってのもたまには考えるんだけどさ。どうして発生するのかもわからない謎の怪奇現象。止める方法なんて途方もない話しすぎて解決する気がしない。やってることは調査でも何でもないんだけど、それ以外にしっくりくる言葉がないってだけなんだな、これが。彼らは本家より離反した身だが、せめて周囲の平和を守るくらいの力はあろう。なんて、それが我が家に伝わる家訓。家訓ってほど立派なもんじゃないけどね。Alright, <笑> our family motto passed down through generations. Okay, well the dialogue is now kind of getting to me, so I'm gonna. I've been a little quiet, I think. And it's because I'm a little tired, and this uh, this particular chapter is very long. So I do apologize. Last words.
たく家訓とかさ古臭いしきたりってのは面倒だよねほんと守るの自体はいいにしてもさ守れって義務にされると途端にやる気がゼロよゼロare the humans who get these powers who get the power of EXS and they are created during the nights so usury has a detective oh so if humans are bitten by a voice they can get the power of EXS and become in, in births Yeah, you can probably call wielders uh, in births as well. There's got so much terminology in this game. She's a void hunter. Her and her family, her peoples. But I guess that might extend to. It sounds like it extends to uh, inbirths as well, or, or wielders. If she's been fighting them. Dude, this is this is like in excess of a chapter. This is a lot of reading. She's been talking for like the last probably like 40 minutes now. I'm gonna check the time right quick. All right, we're at 38 minute mark. So I am about ready for a break. Most that awakened to their powers were of the younger generation. It seemed like the problem was that their curiosity made them very susceptible to activating their powers. Kids really were the issue here. They had plenty of time on their hands and were hot blooded to boot. No telling what they were up to. So when you were gathering in numbers and forming groups, they were sure were a spry bunch. Because this is also a pretty much a uh, exposition dump as well. She knows how it. Oh, okay. I, I keep thinking she's older. Like, she looks like she's mid 20s. And then she's like acting like she doesn't know what a smartphone is. まあ、この間まで<笑> <laughs> but she thought that was cool. Yeah, 
just there from fresh there she's using her power to stare like uh probably like Wagner was with uh Orie. ちょっと隔たりができちゃってるけど、若気のいたり一時期の大接近だったってだけ。そのうち普通に話せるようになるでしょ。君の前にはこれからきっと可愛い女の子がたくさん現れるから、お姉さんのことなんて忘れなさい
falling water constituted a proper rain or how many people made it cry, right? It was an analog way of measuring. I don't really understand that. Uh, proper rain, I can understand that terminology, but how many people make a crowd? Um, that's that doesn't seem so subject subjective. I don't think. I think there is a definition for that. I could be wrong. Might be better to imagine it all as a typhoon. The weather goes bad because of it, and rain starts to fall, and there's more of a storm as you get closer to the center, just like that. I'm getting closer to where the EXS is concentrated just a bit more, I think. So it's a little bit... Only thing I don't like about the game story is it's a little too much in these characters' heads. Like, you get every little nugget of what they're thinking. And sometimes it even loops in on itself and repeats. So it's, it's a, some of it's a little redundant, a little unnecessary. A little purple. glanced at the edges of my vision and something like an electric shock ran through me it depended on the person whether they felt this or not I usually didn't move close to where the EXS was most constant because she's she's been moving closer to this EXS this the epicenter of this EXS for a quite a while now for like the last two minutes now she's been text after text of her creeping towards this EXS epicenter so we, we just need to get there. All these thoughts are, we don't really need them. Strange uh, shock-like sensation. That being the case, see? The world's, the world here has already become a night. Which you established already. The rise of EXS. This is the wall of this world. The abnormal can pass through it, and the normal avoid it. Those who can sense the night are those who hold the power of excess. Okay. In other words, you stand out even more in this sort of place where there was no one else around. I mean, there was no one else around after all. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. This guy sure opens. Coming out here to cause a ruckus. Whatever, I guess I'll have to teach them a thing or two. Okay, I think that's the end of this chapter. Yeah. Okay. The Yuzuriha one. I made a mistake of watching this one. At four o'clock in the morning so that's my bad so I'm a little bit tired after doing a audio story but I could do a like maybe run through hers but uh, hers is hers was altogether more boring than uh, audio's because she didn't have too many characters to play off of and uh, it was largely an exposition dump but to be fair audio's first chapter was an exposition dump too so I think um user reha's uh, second chapter be much more interesting I'm um, going by what we experienced with her and maybe her third chapter will be also interesting so so anyway I'm not gonna um, follow this one up right away I'm gonna um, go ahead and get some rest and uh, follow this one up later so hopefully I can get back to it uh, once I wake up otherwise it probably will be a week before I can um, continue to record this particular thing it won't matter to you guys because you guys will be seeing um, these uploads um, much later. Most likely months later, if not a friggin' year later. So uh, hopefully I can get this uh, story, um, this Chronicle Mode out to you guys before um, um, the next update to this game comes out. The uh, CLR version of Undernight Inbirth uh, EXE latest. So I uh, hope you guys are enjoying this uh, story mode playthrough. I um, hope you guys continue to enjoy it. Definitely take care, guys. Till next time. Peace.